ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد so firstly we ask Allah Azza wa Jal that he rewards our brothers for again organizing and allowing us this opportunity to again address our sisters in Al-Islam with some short pieces of advice. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal that he allows us to benefit from that which we will take bi'ithnillah and that he rewards our sisters and he places barakah in their gathering and that he rewards them for their eagerness in coming together for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen their sisterhood and grant them thabat and firmness upon the book of Allah Azza wa Jal and the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we wanted to talk about and discuss and share with our sisters in Al-Islam bi'ibnillahi ta'ala yani some general advice that the ulama of the sunnah that the scholars of the sunnah that they often repeat and remind us with and the first of which or the first piece of advice is pertaining to guarding the rights of Allah Azza wa Jal that is that one guards and observes the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we wanted to mention bi'idhnillah that what does this entail? What does God in the rights of Allah Azza wa Jal entail? And it entails that you, my Muslim sister, that you prioritize Allah Azza wa Jal in your life. That you prioritize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his deen and his religion. That he sent down upon his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that you make it a priority in your life and you make it your focus and your primary objective and that you prioritize in your life the seeking of the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I wanted to begin bi'ithnillah by sharing with you a beautiful tremendous hadith a beautiful hadith in relation to seeking the pleasure of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this hadith, ya akhwati fillah, it will put into perspective and it will show to us and highlight to us the stark difference between the one who prioritizes seeking the pleasure of Allah wa ta'ala and between the one who prioritizes seeking the pleasure of the people. And this tremendous hadith of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is collected by a tirmidhi rahimahallahu ta'ala and Ibn Hibban and it has been authenticated by the muhaddith Shaykh al-Albani rahimahallahu ta'ala and that is the narration that mentions Kataba Ma'awiyah bin Abi Sufyan ila Aisha radiyallahu anha aniktubi ilayya kitaban tusini fi wala tukthiri and that is a narration that mentions the Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan radiallahu an that he wrote to Umm al-Mu'mineen Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha to write to him a letter addressing him and advising him therein. And he said, وَلَا تُكْثِرِي And he keep it short and concise. Keep the advice short and concise. So Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha out of all of that which she could have responded with, she chose to respond to him with a hadith of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, with Khairul Kalam, with the best of speech, with Khairul Hadi, and the best of guidance. And that is Hadi Muhammadin, وسلم, the guidance of Muhammad. وسلم. And out of all the hadith, the numerous hadith that she had heard, from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Wasallam having lived with him and accompanying him for many years 
that she radiallahu ta'ala anha that she chose this specific hadith and this shows us the importance of this hadith and how beautiful it is as an advice so she responded to Muawiyah radiallahu an with the following she said salamun alayk amma ba'd fa inni sami'tu rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul man intamasa ridallah بسخط الناس كفاه الله مؤنة الناس ومن التمس رضا الناس بسخط الله وكله الله إلى الناس والسلام عليك She responded back to him and said رضي الله عنها after sending salam she said as for what follows then indeed I heard the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم say whoever seeks the pleasure of Allah عز وجل through the displeasure of the people, then Allah Azza wa Jal will suffice him from the people. Whoever seeks the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal, through the displeasure of the people, then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will suffice him from the people. وَمَنْ الْتَمَسَ رِضَ النَّاسِ بِسَخَطِ اللَّهِ وَكَلَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَى النَّاسِ And whoever seeks the pleasure of the people, through the displeasure of Allah Azza wa Jal, then Allah will entrust him to the people. Wassalamu alaik. So what beautiful advice and amazing hadith from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it's an affair, ya akhawati fillah, that we have to truly understand as we find many of the people afflicted with this disease of wanting to conform and to please the people. All in expense of angering and displeasing Allah Azza wa Jal and compromising their deen وَلَعِيَاذُ billah. and if only they were to prioritize seeking the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal in their lives then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will suffice them from the people they will not be in need of the people because they have Allah wa ta'ala Rabbul Alameen and we find also in another narration a similar wording and that is that he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, مَنْ إِنْتَمَسَ رِضَ اللَّهِ بِسَخَطِ النَّاسِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ وَأَرْضَى عَنْهُ النَّاسِ Whoever seeks the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal through the displeasure of the people, then Allah will be pleased with him and he will cause the people to be pleased with him. وَمَنْ إِنْتَمَسَ رِضَ النَّاسِ بِسَخَطِ اللَّهِ سَخِطَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَأَسْخَطَ عَلَيْهِ النَّاسِ And whoever seeks the pleasure of the people through the displeasure of Allah, then Allah will be angered and displeased with him. And he will cause the people to be displeased and angered with him. So what is it that we are prioritizing? Are we truly putting forth and prioritizing the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal above all else, regardless of the people? Or regardless of whether the people are pleased with us or not. Because that should be our goal and our objective. That we are seeking to please Allah wa ta'ala. That before we act, we ask ourselves, Is this action pleasing to Allah Azza wa Jal? Before we talk, we ask ourselves, Is this statement pleasing to Allah wa ta'ala? Is it going to bring me closer to Allah? Or further away from him. Is this speech speech that is pleasing to Allah Azza wa Jal? Or displeasing to him? As he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the hadith collected in Al-Bukhari وَإِنَ الْعَبْدَ لَيَتَكَلَّمْ بِالْكَلِمَةِ مِنْ سَخَطِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى لَا يُلْقِي لَهَا بَالًا يَهْوِي بِهَا فِي جَهَنَّمْ That the slave speaks with a kalima, with a kalima, with a word that is displeasing to Allah Azza wa Jal without paying any attention to it, without considering, without considering it to be of any importance. Yahwi biha fi jahannam. And due to it, he will descend into the fire. And it's mentioned in the hadith of Abu Sa'id al Khudri radiallahu ta'ala an, that the Prophet said, Ida asbah ibn Adam. فَإِنَّ الْأَعْضَاءَ كُلَّهَا تُكَفِّرُ الْلِسَانَ فَتَقُولُ That when the son of Adam gets up in the morning, 
all of the limbs humble themselves before the tongue and say, Ittaqillaha fina, fa innama nahnu bik. Fear Allah for our sake, because we are with you. Meaning we will be rewarded or punished as a result of what you do. Fa in istaqamta, istaqamna. So if you are upright, then we will be upright. Wa in i'wajajta, i'wajajna. And if you are crooked, then we will become crooked. For shahid, so the point here, my sisters in Islam, is that we seek the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal in our actions, in our statements, that we are mindful and careful of what we do and what we say, and that we ensure that that which we do and that which we say is done in order to seek the pleasure of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. And if it's not, and that we prioritize the deen of Islam in our lives, and that we guard and we observe the rights of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, and that we are mindful of Allah Azza wa Jal, Ihfadillah, Yahfadka, as he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the one on the hadith of Ibn Abbas, Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhuma, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam turned and said to him, Ya Ghulam, Inni Uallimuka Kalimat, O oh boy, I will teach you some words, yani some small pieces of advice, Ihfadillah, Yahfadka. Be mindful of Allah and He subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you. Ihfadillah tajidhu tajahak. Be mindful of Allah and you will find Him in front of you. Meaning that ma'iyya al khasa, that specific nearness that Allah azza wa jal is with His slave and that He is guarding Him and protecting Him. The one who is mindful of Allah azza wa jal, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects Him and preserves him. And he sends his angels to protect him. As he said, Tabarak wa ta'ala, لَهُ مُعَقِّبَاتٌ مِّن بَيْنِ يَدَيْهِ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِ يَحْفَظُونَهُ مِنْ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ For each one are successive angels before and behind him who protect him by the decree and the command of Allah Azza wa Jal. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ وَإِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِقَوْمٍ سُوءًا فَلَا مَرَدَّ لَهُ وَمَا لَهُمْ مِن دُونِهِ مِنْ وَال And Allah will not change the condition of a people until they change what is in their own selves. And when Allah Azza wa Jal intends for a people, a harm or an affliction, there is no repelling it. And there is not for them besides Him any aid or supporter. So be mindful of Allah, my sisters. And Allah Azza wa Jal will preserve you and protect you. And another advice for our sisters in Islam is that they guard the rights of Allah Azza wa Jal. They be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they focus on building a strong Islamic identity. That they focus on building their Islamic identity and instilling that in themselves. And in their daughters and their children, that they hold firm to their Islamic identity. Especially, ya akhwati fillah, in a time where the identity of the Muslim woman is severely under attack, is constantly under attack. We find that her identity is constantly under attack and being challenged. And as if her simply adorning herself with the hijab is some type of threat to them. So for our sisters is to build a strong Islamic identity. To have a firm Islamic identity. One that is built upon and has as its core foundation the book of Allah Azza wa Jal and the sunnah of his messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when she is firm in her identity and she is seeking nothing else but the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal, then bi idnillahi ta'ala nothing can harm her. Nothing can shake her and take her away from that identity. So no matter how much they try to strip away from her, her Islamic identity and her hijab and her adornment with the hijab, 
and her haya, her shyness and her modesty and her upright and noble character. That be idnillahi ta'ala. If she is mutamassika, if she clings firm to the book of Allah Azza wa Jal and the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and she is mindful of Allah, she is dutiful to Allah tabaraka ta'ala, she seeks the pleasure of Allah, then be idnillah. Nothing can shake her and strip away from her the identity. And they should feel a sense of izzah and honor through their Islamic identity, through their strong Islamic identity. As the famous statement of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu mentions, when he said, Inna kunna adhallu qawmin fa'azzana Allahu bil Islam. فَمَهْمَا نَطْلُبَ الْعِزَّ بِغَيْرِ مَا عَزَّنَ اللَّهُ بِهِ أَذَلَّنَ اللَّهُ He said, رضي الله عنه, that indeed we were from the lowest of people and Allah Azza wa Jal gave us honor and empowerment through Islam. So whenever we seek izza in other than that which Allah Azza wa Jal has given us izza in, then Allah Azza wa Jal would debase us. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will debase us. So our sisters should feel the izzah through al-Islam. That Islam has come and he has honored the Muslim woman. That the Muslim woman is the most honorable woman out of all the women. And Islam has come and given her that honor. That she is honored through al-Islam. For her clinging firm to the deen of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. That Allah azza wa jal qad karramaha. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored her. And the examples of this within the book of Allah azza wa jal and the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are plentiful and numerous. For how dare they? How dare they try to claim otherwise? For look at the manzilah. And the position that Allah Azza wa Jal and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave to the mother. And that alone is sufficient. The station that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that they raised the mother to. And the station of the wife. And how she is to be spent upon. And the sense of morality and protection that the shara and the legislation has given to the Muslim woman. When they themselves have nothing that can even come close to it in terms of fadl, in terms of virtue, and in terms of morality. Billah. And an example of this, Ya Akhwati Fillah, just to mention a brief example of what the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said in regards to raising daughters. He said, وسلم, as collected in the Sahih of Imam Muslim, Man ala jariyatain. حتى تبلغ جاء يوم القيامة أنا وهو كهاتين وضم أصابعه Whoever supports two daughters till they attain maturity then he and I will come on the day of resurrection like this and the messenger of Allah وسلم, that he joined his two fingers together and he said وسلم, in the hadith of Uqbah collected in the sunan of Ibn Majah من كان له ثلاث بنات فصبر عليهن وأطعمهن وسقاهن وكساهن من جدته كن له حجابا من النار يوم القيامة Whoever has three daughters and is patient with them and feeds them and gives them food and water and clothes them from his own wealth then they will be a shield for him from the fire on the day of resurrection. And this is just one example. And another thing we wish to mention, bi'ithnillahi ta'ala, off the back of the previous point. And that is in relation to role models and who our sisters take as role models and guides and people to look to. And sadly we find that many of our sisters and this is not exclusive to them. But we find that some of them take as their role models. Those who billah, are evil examples. And they begin to imitate them. 
and they take from them their morals and their advice and even as relates to relationship advice and how to live their lives and they hear all of these ideas that are rooted in liberalism and feminism and they are told that this is their empowerment and this is their liberation and it's all that which is immoral and against the deen of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala and that which Allah azza wa jal has given them by way of honor instead of looking to those women whom Allah azza wa jal has made them an example for us for both the men and the women as we find for example when Allah azza wa jal mentioned in surah at-tahrim wa daraba Allah mathalan lil ladina amanu imra'ata fir'aun إذ قالت رب بني لي عندك بيتا في الجنة ونجني من فرعون وعمله ونجني من القوم الظالمين. And Allah Azza wa Jal has placed as an example for those who believe the wife of Fir'aun. إذ قالت رب بني لي عندك بيتا في الجنة. When she said, Oh my Lord, build for me with you a house in Jannah and save me from Fir'aun and his actions. And save me from a people who are valimeen, who are oppressors and wrongdoers. The wife of Fir'aun, Asiya, who Allah Azza wa Jal made an example for those who believe. And after she was punished by Fir'aun and accepted the call of Musa alayhi salam to the worship of Allah Azza wa Jal alone, and she called out to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala with this amazing supplication. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described her as having iman wa tadarru' li rabbiha as Imam al-Sa'adi rahimahullah ta'ala mentions in his tafsir that Allah azza wa jal described her as having iman and having submissiveness to her Lord wa su'aluha li rabbiha ajal al-matalib and that she asked her Lord for the most loftiest of all that is to be requested and sought. وَهُوَ دَخُولُ الْجَنَّةِ And that is entering into Jannah. وَمَجَاوَرَةُ الرَّبِّ الْكَرِيمِ And to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَسُؤَالُهَا أَنْ يُنَجِّيَهَ اللَّهُ مِنْ فِتْنَةِ فِرْعَوْنِ وَأَعْمَالِهِ الْخَبِيْتَةِ And that she asked Allah azza wa jal to save her from the trial of Fir'aun and his evil actions. And from the fitna and trial of every single oppressor. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to her supplication. And he said to Baraka wa ta'ala, وَمَرْيَمَ بَنَةَ عِمْرَانَ الَّتِي أَحْصَنَتْ فَرْجَهَا فَنَفَخْنَا فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِنَا وَصَدَّقَتْ بِكَلِمَاتِ رَبِّهَا وَكُتُبِهِ وَكَانَتْ مِنَ الْقَانِتِينَ And Maryam, the daughter of Imran, who guarded her chastity, and we breathed into her, Ruh, and she testified to the truth of the words of her Lord and his books and his revelations. وَكَانَتْ مِنَ الْقَانِتِينَ And she was from those who were devout servants to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. And likewise, akhawati fi Allah, the example of Ummuna Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. And I will share with you bi Allah. Just one narration that highlights the beautiful character and tremendous woman that she was radiallahu ta'ala anha. And that is the narration that we find in Ibn Hibban and was authenticated by Shaykh al-Bani rahimahallahu ta'ala. The Ibn Umair, the Ibn Umair, that he said to Aisha radiallahu anha, أَخْبِرِينَ بِأَعْجَبِ شَيْءٍ رَأَيْتِهِ مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said to her, inform us of the most amazing thing that you have seen and witnessed from the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fasakatat. So she remained quiet for a period of time, reflecting on all of those moments that she had had with the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa Thumma qalat. And then she said, Lamma kana laylatun min al layali. قال يا عائشة ذريني أتعبد أتعبد الليلة لربي. That one of the nights he said to her, he said, Oh, عائشة, allow me to worship 
my Lord on this night. Leave me to worship my Lord on this night. And he requested this from her وسلم, because it was her night. Yani out of all of the wives that it was her particular night. So he said to her, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, leave me to worship my Lord during this night. Qultu. So look at the response of Aisha radiallahu anha to highlight to us her tremendous character and how she was as a spouse and as a wife. She said, Wallahi, inni la uhibbu qurbak. She said, by Allah, I love to be near to you. I love just that I am near to you. And I love that which you love. And I love that which brings you happiness. Look at this amazing response from her radiallahu ta'ala anha that shows to us her excellent character. And the love that she had for Rasulullah sallallahu And the love that she had to aid her husband in doing good. And it's an example for all of us as how we should be as husbands and wives. That we love to aid each other in the obedience of Allah Azza wa Jal. And that the wife should love for her husband that which brings him pleasure and delight. And that which should bring him pleasure and delight is the worship of his Lord and that his wife acts as an aid and a supporter and facilitates that for him. That when there is a lesson that he intends to go to, that she is pleased for him. She is happy for him. She loves the fact that that brings him delight and joy. So she aids him. And that is from the best of a ta'awun al birri wa taqwa of cooperating with each other upon righteousness and piety. But this is how we should aspire to be and whom our sisters should take as role models and who they look for inspiration from in terms of how they act and how they are in terms of their marital affairs and their conduct and their character and their morality and their ethics and other than that. That they don't need to look no further they don't need to look towards these women who promote all types of things in contradiction to the deen of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Wallahu musta'an. And lastly, ya khawati fillah, that we wish to discuss and share as a final piece of advice. And that is as pertains to having mercy and being gentle and kind and being compassionate. That these are characteristics that we look to adorn ourselves with and particularly for our sisters in Islam that they are merciful, that they are kind and compassionate with one another and likewise in their households that their households are households that are filled with sakina and rahma and muwadda they are filled with tranquility and mercy and affection, and compassion, and kindness. And we find the example of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, as is mentioned in the hadith of Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala an, who narrated that Al-Aqra' bin Habis, that he saw the Messenger of Allah وسلم, kissing Hassan. He saw him kissing his grandson Hassan radiallahu an. And he said, إِنَّ لِي عَشَرَةً مِنَ الْوَلَدِ مَا قَبَّلْتُ وَاحِدًا مِنْهُمْ That I have ten children and I have never, not once, kissed a single one of them. So the Messenger of Allah وسلم, upon hearing this, that he said to him, إِنَّهُ مَنْ لَا يَرْحَمْ لَا يُرْحَمْ That indeed whoever does not show mercy will not be shown mercy. Whoever does not show mercy to the people then no mercy will be shown to him. And likewise, is mentioned in another narration, that some of the Arab, some of the Bedouin Arabs, that they came to the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and they said, قالوا, Do you kiss your children? فَقَالَ نَعْمْ So he said, وسلم, Yes. فَقَالُوا وَلَكِنَّا وَاللَّهِ مَا نُقَبِّلْ 
They said, but we by Allah, we do not kiss our children. So Allah's Messenger وسلم, said, Awa amniku in kan Allahu naza'a minkum al rahmah. Then what can I do if Allah Azza wa Jal has deprived you of mercy? So for our sisters, the advice is to be merciful and to show kindness and build households that are built upon mercy and compassion and sakina and tranquility. And with that, bi ta'ala, we will conclude. ونكتفي بهذا وصل الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سبحانك الله بحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك